Hey, Bruce Naylor, your Boomer Consumer. One of my favorite, favorite audio YouTubers is Steve Guttenberg. And uh, he just has an amazing channel. He's extremely knowledgeable on audio. If you've not heard of Steve, uh, I'll leave a link to his channel down below. And I, I watch every video that he puts out. And recently put out a video, 10 Reasons You Might Be an Audiophile. The premise is, uh, and one of, well, I should say one of the things that he said was many people won't admit they're an audiophile. When he's got fans approach him, um, you know, and rec people recognize him, and uh, they say, oh, I'm not, I'm not really an audiophile. You know, my system's not good enough, blah, 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 blah. No. <laughs> and I agree with Steve. So I'm making, I'm making this video uh, as if I was telling Steve my 10 reasons why I am proudly wearing the label audiophile. And I have no problem with that term because there's really no other better word to describe our shared passion for music reproduction. Okay? So reason number one is that I got started at a very young age. I, and that's the point Steve brought up, is that uh, most audiophiles don't get started, you know, when they're 40, 50, 60 years old. No. He started much, much younger in life. And I had a buddy whose his father had a tremendous hi-fi system for that time. This would have been circa 1975. And it left such an impression on me that it, it just hit me like a lightning bolt. That I loved the look of the gear, but more importantly, he put on some, I think some jazz. His dad put on some jazz. I never heard music sound that good. Okay, never. And uh, certainly not out of a, a, a system of any kind. You know, my folks, they had like a big console job that had a built-in record player and I think a TV set and a FM radio. So this was not the kind of thing that I had been exposed to before. And it's just stuck with me for many, many years. Reason number two, music. Of course I love music. Uh, and it is the love of that music and listening to it and being able to hear the nuances. Not just casual listening. I'm a very intent listener when I'm, uh, you know, when I'm sitting down to enjoy my music. I love all genres of music, uh, but mostly classic rock from the 70s and 80s. Some 90s stuff. I found I like ele electronic music. I love, I love jazz. Um, just a wide variety. I'm not too big on country music all that much, but I just love music. But not only do you love music, but you want to hear it reproduced as accurately as possible. No matter what system we got, we want to get the best performance out of it. And we enjoy our music. It's, it's part of our life. Of course, audiophiles love gear. And you don't have to spend a whole lot of money to get good sounding gear. I, I'm, I'm sorry. There is no amount of money that qualify, that you spend on a system that says, okay, you are now officially an audiophile. No, no. There is very affordable gear out there. There's used gear out there. There's all kinds. We, we really, truly, in my opinion, live in the golden age of audio. We have more choices than ever. Now we have DACs and streamers and digital CDs. We, we have analog. We have our choice, a whole plethora of ways to get our music and all kinds of gear to go along with it. Now, I happen to be a vintage gear guy, and I love collecting vintage gear. I love the aesthetics because, to me, this is my personal thing. I think I, I, I love having a system not only sound great, but I want it to be aesthetically pleasing. I want it to be beautiful. And I just find the, the hi-fi gear of the 70s, especially late 70s, early 80s, was just so beautiful with the silver face and, you know, the uh, wooden cases and the, the VU meters and the lights and, and the substantial heft of it. I, I just love the looks of it. And, and yes, I do love looking at gear, even modern gear, as part of the fun. Number four, and that is making changes to the way your system sounds. Sometimes you don't have to spend a nickel to really make a difference on how your system sounds. 
a little room treatment, relocating speakers can dr dramatically change the way your system sounds. Small investments, maybe upgrading a cartridge on your turntable can make a difference in the way your system sounds. Upgrading DACs, uh, upgrading the electronics can make changes in the way your system sounds. It's part of the fun and always, you know, striving to get a little bit better sound, a little bit better dynamics. Sometimes you don't have to spend any money at all. You can fuss around. I can fuss around with my system all day long. We're relocating a subwoofer or just slightly changing the toe in and the speakers and get a different sound. It didn't cost me a dime. Reason number five, you can put together a nice, nice system for far less than the cost of other hobbies. I think this was something Steve brought up. He mentioned gambling is a hobby. <laughs> and what a money pit that is. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a gambler, so, but I know people that's lost practically everything because of gambling and the addiction to it. No, no. You can get a nice system for less than the price of a motorcycle or a sports car or, a, you know, there's all kinds of hobbies you can dump a lot of money into. Don't be ashamed to spend a little bit of money on your system. It was like I tell my wife one day, you know, I said, guess what, honey? I'm home. I'm here with you. I'm in the house enjoying my music, enjoying my system. And I'm not out blowing a ton of cash on all this stuff because I'm very cautious and very careful when I do buy gear that I don't go overboard. I, I'm the kind of guy you'll probably never see have a $50,000 turntable ever. I don't even care if I won the lottery. I just would not bring myself to spend that kind of uh, bucks on it. But I do appreciate good quality gear. And you can do this hobby relatively inexpensively and certainly far cheaper than many other hobbies. Number six, the audiophile community. I love the enthusiasm that people in our people, our tribe, uh, have when it comes to audio. There's very lively debates. There's very deep esoteric debates. People start talking about the differences in cables um, and cable risers and high-end type of DACs. It's fascinating to me. And I love the back and forth and the banter. It can be a bit intimidating to those people just dipping their toe in the water. And there's certainly some snobbery in there. I'm not going to lie to you. But that was the same when I was reviewing, uh, you know, tech, like computers and phones and that kind of stuff. There was, you know, especially you started talking about Windows versus Mac. My God, the, the pure uh, anger people would put, oh, no, 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 no. It's not important. Whether you're into digital or you're into analog, why not enjoy both? It's streaming you know, CDs versus LP. I mean, yeah, you're going to run into some of that, but people are passionate about this hobby, and I happen to love that. Speaking of which, reason number seven, you never learn it all in this hobby. There's always something new that's, uh, or, you know, coming up or happening, or you learn more about acoustics, or you learn, you know, how woofers work, or you learn how a DAC works, or you... Uh, there's always something to learn, and I enjoy that. I enjoy learning new things. You know, I'm just now getting back into collecting vinyl after, <laughs> I don't know how many decades, and I'm getting an education, <laughs> something I just took for granted when you bought music back in the 70s and 80s on records. That's just how it was, and now I'm learning about things like, you know, record grade, grading records, grading sleeves, how to store records, I know proper ways to clean them and maintain them. That's a, that's a whole hobby in and of itself. There's like audiophile, and then there can be all these sub hobbies that go with it. But you're always learning something new. Reason number eight, and I'm going to say this uh, this way. Uh, I think there's a certain pride that we have in our system, be it ever so humble, uh, the accomplishment of putting together a system that makes us happy. Now, others may look at it and go, yeah, that's nice. Uh, you know, let's, <laughs> let's go have a beer. But that same sense of pride, you know, somebody that takes a, you know, a, a classic hot rod Dakar show 
right? If he's around other enthusiasts, it, it, it's there. And other enthusiasts can appreciate your system. And so I think there's a pride of ownership in your, your gear. There's a pride of ownership in the sound of that gear. There's a pride of ownership in the music collection that you have. And I have that same pride of ownership. And I hope you do too. Reason number nine. The hobby keeps getting better and better. Remember when I said I think we're in the golden age of audio? I really do. We have more choice today than ever before between speakers and amplifiers and integrated amplifiers and streamers and DACs. And we still have, you know, uh, we still have turntables and cartridges. And, you know, we didn't have digital back in the 70s and 80s. Today we do. We, you know, back in the early 80s, we got the CD. Now we have streaming. What's the next big thing? Is it fusing, you know, augmented reality with high-end audio? I don't know where this hobby's going. But when I say we're in the, we really are in a, in a golden age. Now, some people refer to the hardware of the 70s as the golden age, and maybe they're right. But when it comes to choice on how you consume your music, we're in it. We really have it fantastic today. I also like to mention we didn't have YouTube. We didn't have access to our tribe like we do uh, today as well. Now we can have online forums and we have YouTube uh, reviewers and we have so many ways to share our love with this hobby. Reason number 10. Uh, I think Steve might have brought this up. But that is showing other people, introducing other people to great music or, uh, being reproduced on a system. Just so show them yeah, you've, you've listened to music on your phone with your earbuds, etc. Now, let me fire up a, let me, let me fire up uh, this system and tell me what you think. And to see that, that light bulb come on, that smile on their face, goes, oh my God, that sounds incredible. You know, not everybody gets it, but some will go, I get it. I, I see why you're obsessed with this. It's, I've never heard anything sound like this, especially if you get somebody that's relatively young, right? And that's all they've listened to is, you know, <laughs> earbuds and iPhones or MP3 players and they've, radios. They've never heard a true hi-fi system. And when they do, they're absolutely blown away. And, and, and that just is a wonderful feeling if you can get somebody else excited about this hobby. Now, I'm going to give you one bonus reason. And that is, for me, when I'm really engrossed in the music, when I'm sitting back, really listening intently, my mind begins to wander a little bit because I start thinking about when I heard that music and what I was doing when that music was playing. And it becomes a kind of a trip back down memory lane. And it's almost like it becomes a time machine. And I remember the friends and the laughing and the fun we were having when we heard, you know, Bachman Turner Overdrive. I remember me and my buddies, you know, heading to Indianapolis to see Aerosmith when, and AD, uh, ACD, uh, ACDC. And you make this emotional connection with your music. And it, when you're listening, you start bringing these memories back. And, and that's just something you just don't get from watching a movie or a TV show. That's very passive entertainment. You don't have to think. You don't, you, your memories, you, you, you just sit there, right? But when you have music and you're enjoying your music and you're listening intently, that starts to happen. And I, I don't think you can put a price tag on that. And I don't think everybody quite grasps that that's one of the main reasons I think a lot of us a lot of us are audiophiles. So that is it. Those are my 11, well, actually my 10 with one bonus reason why I am proudly an audiophile. And to end this video, I would very much like to hear your reasons in the comments down below. Bruce Naylor, your boomer consumer. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.